come out here to Soria, Spain, which is an incredibly rural part of the country, and it really is out in the middle of nowhere. But I came here to bring a very unusual story uh, of four saints that lie in the chapel behind me. Uh, depending on which person you listen to, be it a historian from Yale or the Catholic Church, you may find that two of the saints in the chapel behind me are actually homosexual and that they were written out of the Catholic calendar in 1969. Now, I'm just going to go through the history of their martyrdom, their sainthood with the church, and then I'm going to go into some speculation on how they may have ended up in Spain, particularly this small rural town really in the middle of nowhere. Well, the story is there are four martyrs behind me. Two of them are related on shaky grounds, but Sergius and Bacchus are the main ones. Uh, these were some of the earliest martyrs of the church. I believe they were martyred around 150 CE. And John Boswell is one who uncovered some of the oldest manuscripts of their martyrdom, which mentioned them as brothers using the root word eros, which means that they were in a romantic sexual relationship. But I'll go into that more in detail later. Bacchus and Sergius were two Roman soldiers who graduated in Triste along the Mediterranean coast, and by all accounts, they were crack soldiers. They were good at what they did, and I believe it was Sergius who was the superior soldier in this scenario. So because they were good at what they did, they quickly made friends with the emperor and went to the frontier. And because they were friends with the emperor and apparently in an openly gay relationship, which was more or less at the time accepted, they were requested to go make a sacrifice to the pagan gods with the emperor at the temple of Jupiter in what is now Turkey. And they declined to do this. They said, we can't. And the emperor said, why? Is it because you're Christian? And they didn't deny that. So the emperor said, for real, renounce your faith, come in the temple, it'll be all good. And they refused to go into the temple because in almost an exact opposite scenario to what we see today in the church, especially the Catholic church with a lot of closeted gays, they were open about their relationship, but secret about their church relationship. So in order to humiliate them, most likely because they were known to be gay, they were ordered to put on dresses and march through the town square. And of course, all the local villagers were throwing garbage at them and shouting obscenities. And when they came back, the emperor said, well, have you agreed to you know, abandon your faith yet? And I think it was a little bit of banter on their part, but they said that they were proud to be brides of Jesus Christ. Well, the emperor didn't find this funny. And he moved these two men to Syria and began torturing them with the aim of converting them to the pagan religion or the Roman religion at the time. And they did not convert. Uh, their tortures were incredibly brutal and that's what made them some of the first saints of the church. Uh, I believe it was Sergius who died first and he was, because they were in a relationship, according to Boswell, I'll go into that in a moment, they were in the same cell. And, uh, Sergius got the brunt of the torture because I believe he was the most highest ranking soldier of the two and irons like tongs were heated up to red hot and used to tear the flesh off his body and when he was holding on a little longer they beat him to death and in full view of the cells of Bacchus, uh, of Bacchus's cell they threw Sergius's body out in front of him and rather than the vultures starting to eat it it's said that the vultures protected the body from the dogs and at this point Bacchus is starting to question whether or not he should hold out. Surely, you know, God would have come down and saved him and his, his lover. Uh, but he receives a vision in the moment that he starts questioning his faith of Sergius, where he says, your tortures will continue on for a while longer, but you are a martyr and will be together in heaven soon. So what happens is the following morning, because Bacchus now has renewed hope uh, of his salvation, the Romans fashion shoes for him with sharpened nails in the soles and they hammer them into his feet and make him hobble 18 miles. And when he makes it back and he still has hope, they beat him to death. And their bodies are unceremoniously dumped, but the locals sort of consider them saintly figures. They use them as uh, sort of patron saints, really. 
According to various accounts that I've read of this legend, they became the saintly figures of nomads and shepherds in the region around Syria and Iran and uh, southern Turkey, you know, the Kurdish regions. And over time, they became some of the greatest martyrs that the Catholic Church has ever seen. And it was John Boswell's theory. And when I post this on the history forum, it's an incredible disservice to history and to religion to hear the sort of replies that I got. Because John Boswell was an openly gay historian at Yale University, and he was obsessed with religion. He had gone to Roman Catholic Church every day since he was 16 years old. He was fluent in 15 languages, but he was openly gay. And a lot of his theories met with a lot of resistance because people had come before him trying to say that some of the saints in the early church were homosexual. And they would usually rebuttal that with, well, the word for friend or brother could be misconstrued as to have a relationship. But he found documents, the earliest records of their martyrdom, actually mentioned eros is the root word, meaning to have a romantic relationship, even if it's just platonic. And it also points out, in a way, that they're, the saints were sinners as well. The saints were just as faulty as we are. And it's the, the fault of the church, and it's the fault of the people through the ages, when they place greater emphasis on one sin over another. And I won't get up on my soapbox, I won't be preaching about that, but Boswell was obsessed with this idea. And because he found these records indicating that they were lovers, he started researching more into it, and the idea was pushed that they were actual lovers, some of the earliest martyred people in the church. And where their bodies went, it's unknown, but churches all around the world, especially in Kosovo and around the old Roman churches, because when the Romans started mass converting to Christianity, they felt very bad about the martyrs that they had made, which is why they may end up in the church behind me. There is a, in fact, it's very unknown. It's a very small Roman settlement, but it is just outside of this town. And it's not inconceivable to believe that the Romans went far and wide and started bringing back the martyrs that they had a record of killing. And it could have well ended up that they moved these two saints, Bacchus and Sergius, along with two other saints, which apparently uh, were involved in some way in like magic rituals, but had later converted towards Christianity and, and followed the right path. But the church behind me holds their remains, and every year they make it, uh, they move the remains into one of the local villages or another church. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get inside now, but I'll post some of the photos. This church is incredibly hard to find. And one of the reasons this church is incredibly hard to find is because the Catholic Church officially struck these two saints off the record three months after the 1969 Stonewall Riots, which was the beginning of the gay liberation movement in the United States. You can look into that as much as you want. That's another historic diatribe. But it's interesting that they struck these two saints off those records, along with St. Wilgefortis, who is depicted as a bearded Christ-like icon uh, with a dress on, crucified to a cross. And this was being used, and to this day is still used, as a sort of trans-Christian icon. Because there are LGBT people of all walks that are trying to be Christians as well. And one of the reasons I'm making this video, apart from just telling the history, is because I know a lot of LGBT people who feel like they can't reconcile their sexuality with their religion. And when religion, especially a religion like Christianity, teaches people that everybody's a sinner, it's a disservice to your own church when you target members of your congregation and say that this sin is more grave than my sin of judging you.